everybody, this is Ross, and uh, in today's video, I am very excited because we actually have our first fig that's ripe of 2020. And uh, this is even more exciting because it's not just my first fig of 2020, it's my first homegrown fruit of 2020. And to think that it's a fig is kind of mind-blowing because figs are fall fruits, and uh, a lot of my spring fruits this year are actually a little bit further behind than they would normally because we had such a cold spring, like things like my strawberries, my honeyberries, my gumi, my red currants are still a bit away, maybe a couple weeks before I get to eat those tasty fruits. So even though I'm not really all that keen on brebas, because that's what this is, this is a breba on the variety sucret that we're looking at right here. Um, I'm not a big fan of brebas simply because at the time of year that they ripen, the fig is a, you know, is a fruit that really likes warm temperatures. So if I'm having figs that are ripening during lots of rain or additionally during colder temperatures, uh, they're not going to have the sugars that they need and they're not going to taste nearly as good. So I like to get my fruits to ripen at the height of my season, which is normally July or August. That's when we have the warmest temperatures here consistently at night. Um, so for me, I think getting a Breba in, in May is nice, but it's probably not going to taste all that good, unfortunately. Um, in today's video, I want to taste this for you guys and talk about the actual fruit itself. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about my season, how that's been going so far, and then also talk to you guys about Brebas. So everything we do here really is not revolving around producing brebas because in this climate um, as i said the height of my season is july and august yeah we could get some brebas to ripen in july which would be nice but historically we have such a very crazy spring that our temperatures fluctuate so much at night from the daytime temps to the nighttime temps so it might be 80 degrees out here during the day and then at night it could drip dip all the way down to 40 degrees and that happens in the fall but it also happens in the spring. And today I came out here and actually found this Breva. Yesterday it was attached. This morning it was on the ground. And why was it on the ground? Why did it drop off the tree? It wasn't a bird, it wasn't a critter. It was because of our temperature fluctuations. Last night was quite cool. Um, it was about 70 degrees during the day. And then at night it was around 45. That's enough with that temperature swing to really get these trees to kind of drop their brevas. They, it happens every year. They drop prematurely. As a result, they may never ripen, or if they do ripen like this, they're not perfectly ripe, and therefore I'm eating a fruit that was almost like somebody shipped it across the country, and I'm picking this fig up from a grocery store. That's kind of what this tastes like. It doesn't really taste like a homegrown fig. So, you know, overall, it's, it's pretty disappointing of a breva crop here. So as a result, what I do is I focus on the main crop. The main crop forms on the new growth. So the growth that's coming out of these trees right now, this really green stuff, uh, that's where the fruits will form. And it forms in much higher quantity as well. And it ripens at the height of my season, as I mentioned. So um, a lot of the techniques and a lot of the things I mentioned in these videos is geared towards ripening these particular main crop. Now the brebas, they will form on last year's wood in the fall. So let's fast forward, let's say a couple months from now, we're in the fall season. This growth here is gonna harden up, it's gonna turn brown, and it's gonna form those brebas in the fall. And then fast forward when the tree wakes up the following spring, um, it's gonna start growing these brebas. They're gonna start expanding, swelling, just like these new shoots, these new growth points here. So when the tree wakes up, all that sap flow that comes from the roots is then gonna go upwards towards the tree. And it's gonna put some of that sap flow, some of that carbohydrates, some of that energy into the figs, and it's gonna put some of that energy into the new shoots. So as a result, they're competing with each other in a way. And a lot of that energy is then being directed towards these fruits and limiting the shoot growth here. So what I like to do to not limit the shoot growth because I want the main crop, I want the fruits that are much higher quality and in much higher quantity here in this climate, I want the new shoots 
to be as vigorous and healthy and as strong as possible and not have to compete with these Bravas. So what I did, if you guys saw our earlier Brava video that we did in the greenhouse a couple months ago, we talked about actually removing a lot of these and I removed quite a bit on the Sucret tree here. We had some Bravas last year, by the way, but also this year we had about four. I removed half of them and I actually regret leaving this particular fig on. And there's another Brava here that still has yet to ripen, still yet to get to this, this last stage of ripening, which I imagine will happen over the next couple weeks. And therefore, as a result, the new shoot growth coming out of this particular tree has been limited. And therefore, the main crop has been limited and has lower production and actually may ripen at a later date because of this particular Braba. Just two Brabas was enough to directly impact my tree. So um, yeah, there's some other points and things that went into that, like the amount of heat that was in the greenhouse, triggering a lot of these trees to get fruits on them very early, which also limited the shoot growth. But uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm getting at here is that we focus on the main crop and not the Brabas. Now, if I wanted more Brabas, let's say, a real easy way to approach this is to kind of do somewhat of the opposite of what I like to do. So we're going to then get our tree as many Brabas as possible. Um, let's say this tree was loaded with Brabas and then sometime around July they're going to ripen up and they're going to actually uh, be able to pick these off the tree. And then what we should do is actually try to focus on after the Braba crop ripens getting as much growth as possible because the more growth points and the more growth that we get after these fruits ripen, we're gonna have a sur sudden surge of energy of carbohydrates, and these trees are then gonna start growing. And um, that's then gonna get us enough growth to then be able to supply the Brabas in the fall of the following year. You know what I'm saying? So we're getting as much growth as possible after these fruits ripen to then set the Brava crop. Uh, to form those Braba buds in the fall. Now this is a complete opposite approach of what I like to do because I like to have the growth in the beginning of the season um, and then limit the number of growth later in the season. The reason for that is because of lignification. I like to stop the growth by about August. If you have any growth after August here in Philadelphia, you're going to have unlignified growth that unlignified growth is going to get damaged by our cold. It's just too cold here. Um, so it really does depend on where you guys live and the approach that you guys want to take. Do, should I remove my Brabas? Should I leave them on? It really depends on where you guys live, what your spring is like, what your fall is like, and what your winter is like. So yeah, there's a lot of food for thought there, guys. Um, now, to be able to get a Braba so early as this, because some of you guys might be thinking, holy crap, it's, it's May 20th. How was I able to get a Braba by May 20th? Well, this means that this particular tree woke up in our greenhouse with the help of our space heater that's in there 90 days ago. So around February 20th, it's not the exact date, but that is when probably this particular tree had woken up. And I actually think these trees, for the most part, that did get that head start in the greenhouse here, they didn't wake up until about March 1st, March 20th for some of them. I know Sucret was one of the earlier ones, so you could probably say March 1st, March 5th is probably a really good date. But what that means is we didn't have the standard 90 days for these particular fruits. So once the fruits form on these main crop, as an example, or even Brabas, once they start to show and start to swell, it's only 90 days on average but before they're ripe. And that does depend on the variety. And I know Sucret is one of those varieties that does take that 90 days. So as an example, what this means is that I think because we had so much heat in the greenhouse, we've probably actually limited and lowered, I should say, those 90 days to probably 80 or 75. Uh, it was kind of like summer in that greenhouse for a number of months. So I think that's where and why we're able to get fruits so early is that, again, if your tree just wakes up, let's say March 1st, you should just expect your Brabus to ripen by June 1st. I mean, that's just math, right? So let's cut this open now. I want to try this with you guys. Again, it's really not 
it's not going to be all that tasty. It's really still quite firm and, and a fig that is really well ripened is a fig that has a very soft neck to it. And this one unfortunately does not. So let's see if the sugar content in here is any, is any good. Oh, that actually looks pretty darn good for a Brava. I'm not going to lie. That looks pretty decent. Um, that's not a bad looking fig for this early in the season for, <laughs> for what I was expecting. Um, but I bet you the, the bricks on this is quite low. It probably doesn't taste nearly as good as it looks. So let's try it. Yeah. So the inside's pretty good. The inside's really good, actually. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> you know what this just did for me? You know why I'm laughing is that Things are just so darn good, guys. <laughs> I'm like a crazy person laughing, <laughs> laughing like the Joker about figs. Um, <laughs> but they, they really are. I mean, um, this just sort of reminded me of why I do this. It's really, it really all it did. Uh, first fig of the year <laughs> just got that reaction out of me. Um, the skin's horrible. So... We don't want to eat the skin. I'm just going to eat the inside. The skin's just not ripe, guys. It has a very green taste to it. The inside's semi-sweet with some melon tones. Actually, a little bit of berry tones. You could taste some of that sugariness in it. And the nice thing about Sucret, it's a variety that has pretty small uh, acnes. At least you can visibly see them right now because it's it's uh, it's underripe, but the fig is really has a nice texture to it, um, so it's nice and smooth and uniform and really tastes quite jammy. So um, even though it's not really jammy right now, you can still kind of pick that up of what I'm talking about. Uh, but the outside's still very green, not a whole lot of sap flavor I'm getting because sometimes you can get that when they're underripe, but it's really good. Man, this is why we do this, guys. Even this, which I would say on a scale of uh, one to five in flavor, this is probably really almost as low as it gets. This, this might be a two out of five, and I still really appreciated that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, you can only imagine what a 5 out of 5 would taste like at the peak of your season. Um, that was still quite good. So I want to thank everybody out here for watching this one. I hope you guys learned something about Brabas. You know, I should talk more about Brabas, but again, here in this climate, we just don't focus on them. And uh, as a result, I don't really talk a whole lot about them. But there are some legit strategies and different ways of thinking that you should be using uh, that approaches this whole way of growing figs quite differently um, than what I'm doing here in these videos. So uh, thank you guys here for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Check out our blog, figboss.com. It's looking beautiful. We have our videos on there. We have our, our podcast on there. We have our consulting services and our blog. The whole thing has turned into something real beautiful. We're ready to put that on search engines like Google. And uh, our podcast is now on almost all the platforms. So check out our podcast, Fruit Talk. We will see everybody soon, all right? Take care. I hope you guys get some figs soon, all right? Stay safe.